as we learn the main concepts of the chapter one, starting from the units and vectors and the significant figures, we're going to cover a couple of examples in this lecture. The first of all, uh, the first one based on the, the how can I really the, calculate some vectors in terms of some representation. Starting from the question, so we are going to get two vectors with the right angles. For example, one of the, the country sky uh, skis in one kilometer to the north, which you can see from the direction in the left hand side, and two kilometers to the east. And then we want to understand how far and in what direction is she starting from the starting point. So just the basics, see from the one kilometer to the north and here, and two kilometers to the east, and from the fundamental definition of the vectors, we get this red arrow from the resultant displacement with the angle of phi. And first, we want to understand how big this distance. So this, we want to understand the distance from the starting point. And we have a basic mathematics, which is called hypotenuse. And then one kilometer square plus in the two kilometer square in the, in the square root, we're going to get result in 2.24 kilometers. One thing which you have to pay an attention that we are using these units is kilometer. If this is the meter, you have to convert these units. And then the second things, again, the mathematics help us to, from the trigonometric concepts. We want to understand what this angle is. So tangent phi, just basically the, from the opposite direction to the lower direction, so from the two kilometer to the one kilometer, we will get the two without any units because they are canceling to each other. So at the end, we want to understand the, the phi angle, basically the trigonometric operation of arc tangent two, just roughly give me to 63.4 of uh, fourth degree of north. So basically this is showing the, like a, the, the 63.4 degrees of north. Or other way around, we can extract from the 90, we can get of 20.26.6 north of east. So this is the basic calculation of the, the vectors, how we can really quantify and make the mathematics. The second example, we want to understand the, the fundamental important thing is the scalar product. So the question is to find the scalar product of A dot B, so basically two vectors of two below, and then to calculate the magnitudes depending on the A and B. Let's see, this is the general chart of representation of my vectors. This is my x-axis and y-axis, and this is my vector A and this is my vector B. The first, I have to see what is the angle of my vectors. So this is the red line, 53 degrees, shows that the, how my A vector is far from my x-axis. -axis. And for my B vector, it's 130 degrees. It's basically uh, far from the, the x-axis. The one thing that we learn from the scalar product, I have to find the angle between A vector and B. So this is basically this green line, the phi. The phi is just the basic mathematics, 130 minus 53, we're gonna get 77 degrees. So we're gonna apply this certain rule, which is the scalar product. As you can see, magnitude of A times magnitude of B, and the, the angle between phi with the cosine. So basically four times five with the cosine 77, I'm gonna get something like roughly 4.50. This is the result of my example. But of course, there's another way to, to calculation if you remember from the, the components of the, the vectors. So I can get my AX, AY, BX and BY vectors with respect to the X and Y axis. So if just use this method, which is a bit longer method than the other one, you can get this four times the cosine 53, because basically I'm just getting the component of the x vector, ax. This is roughly the number of 2.47. And then ay, basically the same methodology, four times the synth 53. So basically this is 3.2. And then the same methodology we apply for bx and by. And then I can get my vector, you can see in here, a dot b, basically the, the, the unit vectors, two times multiplication, e times e, and then they are parallel to each other and then cancel. So basically it's my scalar quantity. AX times BX, basically we have these numbers. AY times BY, AZ times BZ. It's not written for longer term, but the results will be consistent with the previous one. Okay, the next example from the same concept, but more importantly, and for student point of view, you may get something in your exam and to find the angle between two vectors, which is represented as in terms of numbers. 
So this is my vector A. Basically, you can see 2.20. Just remember the significant figures times E, my unit vector. Same manner, 3.00J and 1 times K. Don't forget that we have a significant number just in the same manner. And then I'm applying the same rule again. I have A vector dot B. So basically magnitude of A times B cosine phi angle between. So and then I want to find this angle. Basically this is my cosine phi. A dot B divided by magnitude multiplication AB. When you write explicitly in this equation AX, BX, AY, BY, AZ, BZ, it's written explicitly there because my unit vectors just cancel to each other and I get my scalar quantity. I'm going to write these numbers in here. So what is my AX? It's basically 2. And what's my BX? It's my 4 minus 4. So I'm just multiplying in here. Plus the same manner, 3 times the 2 and so on. This is my A times B in vector product. And the second thing is how about my magnitude of my A vector? This was, remember, it was a definition. So basically in the square root, AX squared plus AY squared plus AZ squared. I'm just getting the numbers from 2 to here and then get the square root of this number and then the square root of 40. And then I do the same fashion for the B and then I get my square root of 21. So as a final, in my results, I want to find my cosine phi angle. So cosine phi is, will be AX times BX plus AY times BY plus AZ times BZ. Don't forget, this is the number of the scalar quantity because my all unit vectors just cancel to each other. Divided by A times B, just the magnitude. So basically I get something scalar at the end. So minus 3 divided by the square root of 14 times square root of 21. When you get this number, of course, you have to apply the same methodology in the example one. Arc times cosine phi. So basically you have to get roughly the degrees of 100 if you use the, the, the tools. Okay, in this part of the lecture, we are going to concentrate on the vector products. So what was the vector products? If you remember, we do have a two vectors, A and B, and then I'm just going to multiply by the cross product. So what was my A and B? First, let's define that one. These are the two things. This is my A and this is my B vector in terms of unit vectors. So AX times E, this is my vector on the direction of the x-axis, and AY times J plus AZ times K. In the same manner, we do the same thing for the vector B with the components. So just use the basic mathematics and multiply by everything with the, this two case. So starting from the first, just care, the, the follow very carefully, AX times E cross times BXI plus AXE, I'm still in the first one, times cross times BYJ in the second component. And then AX times E um, cross BZ times K. So basically, I do the same methodology starting from the first vector from here to the end, AYJ cross BXI and AZK cross BXI. So once we apply this methodology, you're going to get something in critical in terms of the unit vectors. So I'm just, I wrote the explicitly here the results, basically AY times BZ, you can see from here, AY times BZ minus AZ times BY in terms of i vector, so basically in the direction of the x-axis, and AZ times BX, these are the magnitudes, minus AX times BZ in the direction of the y-axis, J, and then the plus AX times BY minus AY times BX is the K. So the question is that how can I really understand how these, these minus are come from? So this is basically the answer is coming from the unit vectors. That's the reason I just signed here is 2 thip. The first one is the most simple one. Just be careful about, for example, when you multiply by unit vector by itself, since they are in the orthogonal to each other, it's going to be in the, in the same direction, will be zero, because the multiplication factor between them is the sinus angle. So basically, all terms cross E cross E or J cross J will be zero. But on the other hand, what you will get when you multiply by, for example, A cross J, this is my vector terms, for example, A, J will be get K. So just don't remember, I have a one vector in one direction, the other one in the other direction. So I will get the, the orthogonal to the other one. This is the definition of the vector product. So I, J will be K, K, I will be J. So basically when I follow this step in the one direction, 
from i to j, I will get k. k to i, I will get j. Okay? And you can also say, how about other way around? If I change the direction, for example, kj, I will get i, but I will get minus. For example, you can see from here, k cross j. k cross j. And then you will get some minus term, az, by. And then you should see the minus term in here. So basically, if you follow in that ring without any step back, you're going to see that it's always positive. But if you jump one step, for example, i, k, you will always get minus j. If you change the direction, you will always get another minus. So this is kind of like a vector calculus that you have to take into account. Okay, my final example that I'm going to discuss for this chapter, it's uh, another vector product example. So the question is that we have a one vector, which is A, has a magnitude of six units and in the direction of the x-axis. So basically this is my red arrow. And then my vector B has a magnitude of four units and it lies in the xy plane. So this is my xy plane and there is something in between, okay? So, and then the, the angle between these two vectors, as we learned before, is the 30 degrees with respect to the x-axis. So the question is, what is my a cross b? As we learned from the, the, in the previous lecture, the lecture content, so basically my cross product, a times b, this is my magnitude, times the sin phi, in this case, this is my 30 degrees. So 6 times 4 times the sin 30, basically this is 1 and a half, I'm going to get something like 24 point divided by 2. This is my magnitude of my vector. So the next thing that is the most important that I have to understand, what was the direction of my a cross b vector? Basically, I'm just defined as c in this case. So what was the rule? The right hand rule, I just get my right hand, get on the vector of the, the first one. This is my a. I get my a, and then I just curl my hand in the direction of the other vector, which is b. So basically A, just go to the B, just see this arrow, just B, and then the direction, of course, in this case, has to be in that direction, this way, because this is an XY plane, okay? And then I just make my this, and then you can see this C vector direction on the Z. Of course, there is a long method that you can also use what was seen in here. So you can get this each component as a kind of vector unit, and then you can use this multiplication method in terms of vector products. One final tip that you may consider, there is a, another method that you can use of the linear algebra multi matrix multiplication in terms of this vector products, if you want to do this practically. Okay, at the end of the lecture, so we want to summarize what we have learned today and what we have covered in terms of examples. So basically we have discussed the physical quantities and units, so just don't, don't forget that we have SI units, is the meter, second, and kilogram in terms of length, mass, and time. And then what was the next thing that the significant figures, when I d represent my numbers in terms of comma and then some numbers, so what is the, the meaningful digits? And then what are the uncertainty on these digits? And then the, the next thing, starting from the third, was the, the main, con main context of this lecture. So basically scalars, just ordinary numbers, vectors, just ordinary numbers and the direction. And then these are the two con physical quantities. How can I apply my vector algebra? Starting from addition, subtraction and multiplication. Of course, we want to understand the vector in terms of all their components. And then how, when I extract these all components, how can I add them together or subtract them together in terms of calculus? And the next thing, in the five, the unit vectors, just don't remember, they always, for example, we have a x, y, z direction, and then we have a, in the x-axis direction, we have a unit vector i with the magnitude of one, and then orthogonal to the, to the y-axis, this is the unit vector of j, the magnitude of one, and orthogonal to the z, which is the direction of the, the, the k vector with the magnitude of one. And after that, we have a two, fundamental important things for the physics applications, scalar product and vector product, because we have a lot of scalar quantities and vector quantities in physics. And this is what we have learned about when you have a two vectors, A, for example, for in terms of scalar product, we have A dot B, which is basically a magnitude of A, magnitude of B times the cosine angle between these two vectors. And the same things, the vector A cross vector B, so basically A times B, 
the phi angle between the multipl multiplied by the sinus angle between of these two vectors. 